Hey, what's up, guys? Andrew from American Musical Supply here at Winter Nam 2020. It is day three, and uh, we are we're kind of pushing <laughs> through here. <Yep. laughs> I'm here with Mr. Dave Weiner, and uh, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. That's good. Thank you for day three. <laughs> uh, feeling good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. I appreciate it. And uh, I just wanted to ask you about your relationship with Paul Reed Smith mm -hmm. guitars and uh, what it is about a Paul Reed Smith guitar that speaks to you as a guitar player. And sure. um, uh, yeah, and I think maybe some of our viewers can can like. Uh, pick up some things about like what to look for in an instrument when they're out shopping for themselves? Sure. Um, well, I've been a, a PRS artist for 10 years now, mm -hmm. and um, what I was looking for an instrument that can handle a lot of road wear yep. um, for the tours that I do with Steve I, and they, they get lengthy, which is a, a great thing. We have such a great time, but I need guitars that um, are built so well I needed seven strings for the for the Vi stuff, um, 24 frets, um, a variety of tones. So the first guitar that drew me to PRS was the 513, which I don't think they make anymore. It's now called the I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up, so I'm not even gonna say it. But um, it 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 has um, you know single or hum single hum, right. and then aside from a five way switch, there was a three way switch right. to go from single coil mode to low output humbucker mode to high output humbucker. Mode. And they have uh, various versions of like that 13 now. Thirteen sounds or something. Yeah, like that, yeah. Right? Now um, there's different. They they do it. They do it still, but a different way to do right. it. But I got so many tones out of that guitar. I said, all right, let's do let's do a seven string of that. Um, because with Steve um, and, and my music, you know, I, I uh, logistically, especially when you're flying overseas, you can't take nine, ten guitars usually. <laughs> so I need a guitar and a, a few of them that can do a lot of different things. Yep. So the PRS answer that very easily, aside from the fact that, again, the build quality is amazing and they look beautiful. And uh, the PRS people are so fantastic. Uh, uh, and accommodating to needs and because um, that 513 seven string um, I mentioned it yesterday I believe it's still the only 513 seven string that they ever made um, which I'm honored to have played the crap out of <laughs> and it still still sounds amazing um, but we've done custom 24 seven strings mm -hmm. we've done and I don't just play seven string actually my main guitar uh, is a silver sky right now with my new band monument shine it was more strat type tones for that writing and, and uh, that gigging so that's what I play right. and I love it it's a fantastic again it's a S type guitar but PRS build quality uh, and they put a lot of thought into that sounds fantastic plays fantastic mm -hmm. so they just the guitars um, they just answer my needs it's really all it comes down to and and inside of that all of the other levels that most guitar players want the look right you know the whole vibe of right. a guitar that's very important you know it's uh, kind of like an interesting PRS I think is like an interesting mix like there are other manufacturers that maybe make guitars that are more catered towards certain kinds of music but it seems like with with Paul Reed Smith guitars their instruments are um, you know very versatile like you said like the 513 you know I, I know guys that use that for playing R&B which is like totally different Absolutely. from like what what you're doing but it's not a guitar that's specifically made for something you know I know people right. that play DGTs that don't use them for blues like David Grissom. You know? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that, that's a great point because I see people using all sorts of their models for everything. Right. Um, I mean, uh, Amo Wurstler, you know him? He's a PRS artist. He uses the hollow bodies, and he is a monster shredder, uh, metal player, uh, you know, that's a generalization, right. but uh, he's out on tour with Tony McAlpine right now, so they're doing definitely a metal, you know, shreddy type of thing. Right. But he's a hollow bottom player, you know. Um, he's got other seven strings and, and such as well, but it, it, it runs the gamut, mm. you know, and that's a, that's a great thing. Um, a well-built guitar with with great pickups, you can milk a lot out of that. Yeah, I mean, if you take this and just roll your tones all the way down, push it in the bridge, or I'm sorry, in the neck pickup, you get some good jazz tones out of that, right. you know? And all the jazz people out there are cringing right now. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You can, you, can, uh, you can get an approximation and a very good one at that. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, people, uh, you know, your viewers and going to your site and, and choosing guitars, it's so personal. It's like, you know, what, what did you choose to wear today? And what did you choose to eat? And the religion you practice, if any, in politics, and if any. Um, 
it's super personal. Right. And I get asked all the time. Um, you know, I run a, a guitar education business called Gitopia, and I get emails and that and Facebook and such. What guitar should I get? And, you know, I try to, well, what are you playing? You know, but it doesn't matter what I say. Mm. I, I, as an experienced player, I can help to kind of push uh, somebody towards what what they're telling me might be their right decision. But that's it. It's ultimately them. Mm. You know, it's such a personal thing that it's impossible for even your favorite guitar players to to tell you what to do. You know, again, you want me to tell you how to dress? You want me to tell you what to eat? It's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's not kind of, but it is the same thing. Right. So, but but you know experience-based wisdom mm. can help guide. Um, but ultimately, the way to do it is get your hands on it. You know, if it's mail order, which I, I buy everything without leaving the house anymore, like, right. like most people. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very simple thing. Um, order it, give it a shot. If you don't like it, send it back. Right. Everybody has return policies. Take advantage of that. Right. That's what it's there for, you right. know? So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a buyer's market. It's a fantastic situation that we're all in because there's no effort anymore. It's like, I think I'm interested in that. Order it, try it, return it if you don't like it, mm. you know. Um, do your research. You know, I would say go to your local shop. You know, shop local. That's always great. But um, when you can't, you know, a lot of local shops are limited. Mm. So go to the local shop, plug into whatever you can just to, get, you know, get that initial feel um, for whatever the product is and then make your decision. Very cool. But it's, it's so personal. It's such a personal thing. That's what everybody has to remember. There's nobody that can tell you because your life up to that second of asking that question, you've developed your tastes and your ears and your tone. That mm. is in your head first. There's the answer. Tone is in the head. It's an approximation. It's an amalgamation of all of your influences, what you think you want to sound like. Right. Then you work on the technique to make that happen, the way you even touch the guitar, and then you go for the gear that is only the outlet for that. You know, single coils, humbuckers, P90s, mini buckers. What are what's the wood you need? Do you need a bridge? You know, that all should be from the initial thought of what your tone is, is supposed to be like. That's That's, really they're just tools. Phrase. These are just tools to help you, you know, like a carpenter to make something. Yeah. The, the hammer doesn't make anything. This isn't going to make you a better player. It's not going to make you sound better. It's not going to provide your tone. you got to start that up here. Mm -hmm. So that's the age-old question. But that is the answer, and everybody hears it all the time. It is. It's the answer. It's, it's like having a vision for your sound. It is. I mean, again, you know, everybody starts somewhere with influences usually. You know, who are your favorite players growing up? You know, who did you love the sound of that song or record or, or just the way that they played um, and the tone that was coming from that? And that's where you can start. You, somebody could say, oh, Slash is my favorite player. Oh, well, you might want to start with a Les Paul then. You know, some Marshalls. See if that works for you. But I've had people... Um, I teach privately as well, and I've had people who have bought the Steve I guitar, amp, pick, cable, you know, and, and the, the serious question, like, I, I don't understand why I don't sound like Steve I. It's nothing to do with the gear. They didn't get the fan. They didn't get the fan as well to blow all the hair back. Um, it has nothing to do with the gear. I mean, that gear was Steve's choice right. to make his idea of tone come out. I've seen Steve also pick up uh, a Squire and play it through a pig nose, oh, and it cool. still sounds like Steve. Right. It's it's all here, right. and then it's how do you how do you touch the thing mm -hmm. to to get that little uh, person I idealized personification of your tone through the finger, and that's when yeah you want to touch the right guitar and through the right amp that's going to help you get that out. But it's not the gear. Right. It's not going to be the gear. Um, wow. So, yeah, that, that's a whole rabbit hole we can go down. But that's an important thing because it does come down to choosing the gear. You know, in a store, it's, um, that's really an important thing. That's why nobody can tell you what, what, you, what you really can have. What is in here and what, which, which one of these things. Again, look at all the varieties. I mean, with a, with a hardtail or a, a, a vintage-style trim. I'm sorry, not trim. I know these. I know people call these trems, but by definition, tremolo is a fluctuation in volume. Right. Vibrato, that's a fluctuation in pitch. So they should be called. I call them bridges. Um, single coils, humbuckers, and the variety therein. There's so much that people are looking for shortcuts. Right. You know, because it does take time, but it's not hard. Go to a store, spend a few hours, play everything they have, even the stuff you never were interested in. I recommend plug into that stuff and, you know, really get the experience. And experience is the only teacher, as hopefully everybody knows. 
um, then you can make better educated decisions. Right. Very yeah. cool. Well, rant over. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just trying to help you know people really get the right decisions for sure. Because you can't base your decisions off of your favorite player. Right. You know, as right. much as you love that person, their sound, etc. It may not work for you. Yeah. Their the uh, what I was saying before is that their life. Their experiences in their life have developed their ears and what they want to do with the guitar or, or and their tone in general. That is so per. That's why it's so personal. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what has led up to my decisions has nothing to do with anybody on the planet, right? Except for me. Yeah. So, that's a very cool, uh, in a way, like way to think artistic way to think about music. It being very personal and a personal form of expression and things. And, uh, and that rather than uh, yeah activity. Yeah. And that can be difficult right. when you start songwriting. Mm. It shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. And I mean in the sense that you, you need to write. For, this is a selfish thing. You need to write for yourself. You don't choose your instrument. Well, <laughs> some people choose their instruments based on other people. But right. again, we just got done saying you shouldn't do that. Uh, your writing, it has to be for you. You have to love it. You can't be concerned. Oh, is, is uh, my... my family going to like this? Are my yeah. friends going to like this? Is my, what if, uh, you know, what if I'm writing, so Steve, I going to like, I, I, I don't care as much as I love Steve. I know I've been his man for 20 years now. I don't care if he likes it because if it's for me, I love it. This is my art. This is what I want to put out right now. Mm. It's as personal as that. So music is very personal. Absolutely. Mm. It is very individual and you hope people love it. You know, you hope people like it as well and you can inspire them. Um, you know, music is, the soundtrack to life, of course. You know, think I always say, think about you watching your favorite movie and take the music away from it. Right. It would suck. <laughs> it would, as much as the acting might be good and the writing might be good. If there's no music to elevate the entire vibe of what's happening, right. it would be a dry mess. <laughs> it would it would just it would just not be great at all. Music is that's what music's about. And right. it's there to let everybody hear. But it has to start with the individual and you have to be a hundred percent uh, into it, you got to have a lot of conviction. If somebody doesn't like it, fine. You're never going to please everybody, so right. don't worry about that. Right. Just please yourself and go from there. So personal, every all of this stuff, super personal. Wow. Well, speaking of your personal expression and and your music, um, where where can people? Uh, you know, you mentioned a l- little bit when we were talking before that you're going to be out uh, on the road this year and and things and uh, not not so much or this did I year. I mistakenly heard yeah that. yeah no I mean um, I've got a new band called Monument Shine That's I put it together last year I, I I started when I was ten and immediately just started writing music it was just my forte got in, got a full band together got into a, uh, a studio we had a full length original record out when I was thirteen then we did another one when I was sixteen so that was always the path and it was vocal music you know fun rock vocal music, you know, taste change and stuff. And then I got into Steve's band, started doing instrumental stuff, which I've always enjoyed regardless, even when I was young and doing vocal music. Yeah. Um, I was listening to Henderson and Robin Ford and, 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 and uh, Stevie Ray, and of course there were vocals involved with that as well. But um, I love the instrumental stuff and I will always do it. But last year I woke up and I was like, why am I not doing a, a vocal project again? So I said, I gave myself six months. I said, I'm gonna put a band together, booked a gig, um, got the band rehearsed, wrote, wrote the music, did it. That was Monument Shine. Now, after that, late October, put out a single and a video. After that, stepped back, kind of viewed what was happening, adjusting. And uh, this year is uh, kind of be uh, going to be version two of that. Oh, cool. So, you know, again, you, you, it's a process to get yeah. a band up and running because, um, you know, at least for me, I, like I said, I kind of let things simmer for a little bit and then say, okay, well, was that exactly where I wanted it to be? Or let's make adjustments and move forward. So adjustments have been made, songs, new songs have been written, and then uh, this year uh, we'll be getting an EP out and uh, starting to gig after that. Cool, very good. And are you doing any dates with Steve coming up? Or? No, so this is uh, mostly uh, Steve's... Uh, from, And I only know this because he uh, at rehearsals the other day we were talking about the... Uh, the, you know the near future and he's doing some orchestral things this year wow. I think a, another Gen X tour um, but not a personal tour um, he's going to be working on a new record and then um, supposedly next year okay 2021 is when another Steve I tour will happen cool yeah very cool well yeah. uh, 
That's great. Thanks for sharing us, uh, sharing with us a little bit about your philosophy and music and instruments and things. And uh, take a take a look out for Monument Shine, the EP that's going to be coming out this year. And also, um, just want to shout out your your guitar uh, education site, yeah. Guitar Topia. G- Gitopia, yeah. G- Gitopia. Just okay. Gitopia, yeah. Cool. So make yeah, sure it's everything that I. You know, again, if you're a, if you're a serious player, you're a lifelong student. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm always a student. I mean, every day, and and I can tell you because I've you know the tours I've done with Steve, the G3 tours I've done with Satch, John Petrucci, Paul Gilbert, Malmsteen, and and many others. Every day they're practicing. Mm-hmm. It's not like they get to a level or you get to a level and you stop. You can, but then. You're not going anywhere. You're not progressing. Life is constantly progressing. You kind of have to evolve with that. Um, but to but to maintain and further your abilities, I can tell you every one of these people are practicing in every single day. And I do the exact same thing. And all of the experience that I've had, um, and I started teaching way young as well, but it's all in that site. And you know, I try to make things as clear as possible, kind of light bulbs to go on in a very easy kind of way mm. so my teaching philosophy is is everything is in there it's all very very simple cool so make sure you check that out too and if you're interested in uh, checking out a Paul Reed Smith guitar you can head on over to AmericanMusical.com thanks Dave awesome thank you so much yeah. appreciate it